What is up everybody, it is me Devil Never Cry, and I'm back with another DMC video. I'm a little bit under the weather at the moment, which is why I may sound a little strange, but regardless, that is not going to be stopping me from talking about today's topic, which is Balrog, the devil arm that a lot of you have been wanting me to talk about, considering we don't see the origins of the devil arm in DMC 5. So without further ado, let's just dive right in. Now I have spoke about Balrog before, we actually knew that he wouldn't be in Devil May Cry 5 all the way back in November 8th actually when I made the video, uh, but then when the Before the Nightmare books came out a week before DMC 5's release, we got a lot of insight into the character of Balrog, which is where we get most of our information about him in fact. So if we take a quick look at Nico's enemy file report, We'll come to find out that Balrog took the throne of the Fire Hell after Burial was defeated. Now for those of you who don't remember, Burial was the fire demon in DMC4, upon which Dante defeated and sealed the Hellgate, gaining Lucifer in the process. The file then goes on to state that Dante ended up running into Balrog, whipping him like a rented mule, and then adding him to his collection of Devil Arms. Now that's fine and all, but there's not a lot of information in that enemy file, report, whatever you want to call it. So if we take a look at the Before the Nightmare prequel novel, we come to learn some interesting things. So Dante's fated fight with Balrog takes place in Via de Mali, aka Doomery Island, the drab, bleak portside town in which DMC2 takes place. Dante in particular is called back by Matir, the old lady from DMC2, who was said to have fought alongside Spardo. But Dante is called back simply because there is a massive demon running rampage throughout the island, and Lucia is having a hard time going up against it. Dante stops to ponder for just a second as to how a demon can make its way from the demon realm into the human realm with such ease but then he recounts how he was stuck in hell for quite some time and managed to escape simply by having a hole to the human world appear in front of him. We come to find out that these so-called holes, these portals between the human and demon realm, are actually quite frequent in portside towns such as the Via de Mali or Fortuna. Nevertheless, Dante is determined to take this demon out, especially after learning that Balrog is the Argosax's right-hand man. For those of you who don't know who the Argosax was, it's basically the main villain from DMC2, so I don't really blame you if you don't know who he is. Nevertheless, Dante ends up making his way to where Balrog and Lucia are facing off, where he spots something in the hands of the giant demon. It turns out that it was a broken shard of the Yamato, and that's exactly how Balrog had managed to make his way from the demon realm into the human realm quite easily. After all, the Yamato is said to be able to not only separate man from devil, but to separate the very fabric of reality and open portals into god knows where. Considering the power the Yamato holds, and subsequently so, how much power a fragment of it holds, Dante has no choice but to fight Balrog. To counteract the blaze of Balrog's burning flames, Dante brings out the Cerberus, the physical manifestation of the tri-headed ice dog from DMC3. And in doing so, he ends up destroying the Yamato fragment at the cost of the Cerberus itself, which is exactly why we don't see it in DMC5, and why Dante gladly takes the soul of King Cerberus as a replacement. And after the fragment is broken and the pair trade a few more blows, Balrog comes to realize just who Dante is, aka a son of Sparda. Knowing that he was the one that defeated Mundus and the Argosax, Balrog willingly submits, stating that when he was powerful enough, he challenged Dante to a rematch, and in the usual fashion, by acknowledging Dante's superior strength, Balrog turns into a pair of flashy gauntlets and greaves, which is exactly what we see in DMC5. And of course, Dante isn't too happy about this, considering he was quite enjoying his fight with Balrog, but he does go on to accept Balrog and warns him to stay quiet, 
just like he did with Agni and Rudra. And thus concludes Balrog. So there you have it, that is exactly how Dante got his hands on Balrog. Of course, the chapter does continue, the book is chock full of information for DMC fans, so I do suggest you go out there and read it. As mentioned, there are translations out there, the book currently is only available in Japanese, but you'll be able to find translations out there quite easily. And in the interest of brevity, I'll leave this video off here. Again, apologies about sounding like this, uh, I'm a bit under the weather as previously mentioned, but this should clear up soon and I'll be back to sounding good as new in no time at all. As always, if you enjoyed today's video, be sure to leave a like, and if you want to stay up to date with all things DMC, hit the subscribe button. It has been me, Devil Never Cry. I would like to thank all of you for watching, and as always, I'll see you next video.